Mm-hmm. Viva la vegan! Hello, my name is Jim Cantlin. Today it's my turn to be Viva la vegan. <laughs> Only joking. Uh, look, I'm really honoured and privileged today to get this opportunity to uh, interview the uh, multi talented and uh, very charismatic Lee Chantel from Viva la vegan. Hi, Lee, how are you? Hello, very good. Lee, in 2013, you had one of the most fantastic years, may I say. Uh, everything was just so positive and productive. Would you like to share some of the highlights? Well, um, I travelled a lot. I was in Asia, uh, coming to the at the beginning of 2013, January, February. I was in Indonesia, I believe, mm -hmm. and Vietnam, um, and then I came home for a friend's wedding. Yeah. So I had a vegan wedding, straight edge or alcohol free and um, vegan and eco-friendly mm -hmm. wedding that was really cool down in Georgie. Then I was home for only a few months before I went overseas again. I went to America for nine weeks, went to... Jet setting vegan. Yes. Then Cambodia for a month, then Indonesia again and I was at various vegan and animal rights events, spoke at a lot of those, did a lot of interviews with people. Um, a lot of content, I guess, was created, mm -hmm. um, blogs, videos, podcasts, any, oh, maybe not any, any sort of unforgettable moments with the, you know, mm -hmm. sort of the, the different cultures and the different peoples? I think um, for me, I, I really liked being in Asia in particular, just to see things from afar like mm -hmm. because I've been so immersed in the vegan community since 2006 at yeah. least and um, like within Australia and even in America and it was just really cool to just see things from afar and see yeah. you know what maybe some of my friends have been telling me all along that you know mm -hmm. and it was just good to just realize it's not the be all end all of everything just yeah. because it has been my life for such a long time it's mm -hmm. not all that there is and just open up to other yeah. things and I just met so many amazing people and you know it really brought home to me that fact that just because someone's vegan doesn't mean they're a nice person just because mm -hmm. someone's you know not vegan doesn't mean they're not a great person, not a nice person yeah. yeah so yeah. I yeah I met some really cool people and yeah, made some great friends and for, for anyone who's um, who hasn't been following you in sort of recent times um, you did win an award in 2013 as well mm -hmm. how did you feel about that it was it was lovely. Over the moon. Um, some award things. I was sort of hesitant when Kathy Devine from Vegans Are Cool told me about it actually because I wasn't mm -hmm. sure the voting process and I wasn't sure. I didn't want it to be like a competitive thing because I don't really agree with competition mm -hmm. in that sort of arena. Um, so that that was a bit of a uh, sort of thing for me. But, but she it, talked me round and I am very. Um, blessed and humbled to receive the award. But it must have been a real sort of validation of your work and efforts yeah, to date. Definitely, yeah, definitely. And that, it's always good actually when you get those sort of things because I remember when Supreme Master Ching Hai gave me an award in mm -hmm. 2009 maybe. Yeah. And um, that was at a time when I really needed someone to believe in me and mm -hmm. to make me go, yes, I'm on the right track. So yeah, yeah it, does, it does sort of cement things for you. So it's yeah. lovely. Kathy does a great job. Oh. That's great. And now look, we're into the third month of 2014 and it's still all systems go. Where, where does um, Lee Chantel get all the energy and motivation to, to keep going? Well, um, I'm not from, sure. From your mum and dad? Or? Um, no, they're, they're pretty, yeah, I guess, you know, none of us are really good at not doing anything. Mm -hmm. So, um, that, yeah, probably from mum and dad, the, that sort of energy, I guess. Mm -hmm. Um, and just good, I guess my parents are both earth signs as well, so I'm very mm -hmm. into astrology, so very good grounding my parents gave me, and I'm a fire sign, Sagittarian so, with... So you're a sheep and a goat, <laughs> is that right? Yeah, in Chinese astrology, yeah. So I, I'm an Aquarius, what, oh, yes. what, is, what is that? That's tiger, is that tiger? No, no, that Chinese and um, the other astrology are different, so oh, they okay. don't necessarily relate. The Chinese astrology relates to years whereas other okay. astrology relates to times when you were born. So there's hope for me, yeah. Yeah, I reckon you'll be fine. <laughs> <laughs> You're all about the collective consciousness and trying to get people wow. to work together and all that sort the of stuff, Jim. So. I like that. Let me just write that down. <laughs>
So I believe this year that you're going to really get into the, um, you know, sort of a refocus on podcasts. Mm, yes. So last mm. year in particular, I did not do, I don't think I did one podcast last year. And mm. I've had quite a few people for a few years saying, come on, when's the next podcast? What are you going to do? So today, actually, I did a podcast with the guys from Which Side Podcast. Mm -hmm. And um, that's the first of many, I hope. So that's online now? Um, yes, that's on yeah. iTunes now, and mm -hmm. it will be on YouTube later on yeah. as well. So yeah. whenever I do a video now, I'm creating that into a podcast, and whenever I do a podcast, I'm creating mm -hmm. that into a video. So I've got all these new gadgets to play with. So, so what made you sort of, um, or what made you think that the uh, the podcasts are sort of so efficacious as such? Um, I guess because um, people can just listen to them in their own time mm -hmm. i think i think that's a really good thing i don't really listen to podcasts myself mm -hmm. um other than afl australian football league you know i'm obsessed with that so no, I, I, didn't listen, know. I listen <laughs> i listen to afl podcasts that's about it though yeah. and um but yeah people I, and i i work from home so i don't travel with public mm -hmm. transport that much or yeah. you know um I, if I and if I do travel like interstate or overseas, I, I normally read a book or something. Like I'm normally not mm -hmm. listening to music yeah. all the time, like a lot of people seem to, or, or listening to something. Mm -hmm. So I think it's good when people, you know, when they're going to sleep or um, just even I know some people that just like to mimic my yeah. accent. So whatever gets you through. <laughs> oh, I think it's a beautiful voice, actually. Thank you. It's, um, <laughs> the tone is just uh, absolutely magnificent. That's okay, the pleasure. But um, just going on, uh, you're also going to um, sort of um, refocus on a, a new sort of uh, line, if you like, or a new uh, a new avenue mm -hmm. uh, called um, Epicenter Equilibrium. Mm -hmm. Would you like to tell our viewers what? Um, so that's my sorry, sorry my my viewers. <laughs> Um, about epicenter equilibrium. That's like my job. So a lot of people um, seem to think I make money from Viva La Vegan, which I mm. do not. Yeah. Um, and so I've been doing social media marketing and content mm -hmm. creation for quite a while. Yeah. And that's the, the name that I use to do, to do that. And I've also added more speaking and training into that this year. Mm -hmm. So not necessarily just vegan stuff. So there's a lot of other things that I speak about or I give um, advice to people and work with businesses on. So yeah. like online etiquette, for yeah. example, which is good for kids and schools. Um, I do like um, events, staging effective mm -hmm. events, engaging volunteers and health related things and vegan stuff as well. And uh, you've also done a lot of work for um, Lee Coates, ethical yes. investments. Yeah. yeah, so cruelty free super, that, that's yeah. one of my clients. Mm -hmm. and I, I, from day one. Yeah, yeah well, they're 100 uh, yeah, yeah. um, cruelty free and Australia's only vegan mm -hmm. cruelty free super or superannuation company. And yeah, yeah it, it's it's really bizarre to me that a lot of people don't really know about it or know, yeah. like, well, I guess okay. people don't, yeah. Well, sometimes yeah. it's probably too hard to, to switch. Yeah, or I think, super, I think the thing is because, you know, in America, you don't have to have superannuation mm -hmm. at all. Yeah. Um, they've got the five. Oh, what's it, I think five oh one. Oh, I can't. I think that's the charity name. I can't remember now. But mm. you don't have to have it. Whereas in Australia, yeah. you, have, you to have, have to have a certain amount of your money goes into your superannuation, mm. your retirement fund, so that that's what you can live on by the time you finish work. So yeah, it'd be nice to us sort of associate with the company. There's not. Um, you know, sort of working for someone else, exporting animals or Well, yeah, and like people just don't realise where their money is yeah. going to. And in particular, if you're a really vocal about veganism or mm -hmm. you're an activist yourself mm -hmm. and you're going out and you're protesting yeah. or you're doing, um, you know, raising awareness to all these things that you're mm -hmm. against and you're supporting all these companies that you like and not supporting ones you dislike, yeah. but then all your money, which is probably most of your money that you'll ever have mm -hmm. goes into your superannuation yeah. account yeah. and into a non-ethical one yeah. so yeah it's a people yeah a lot of people don't really understand mm -hmm. super or don't care and yeah you have to we have to chase up a lot of people to put in their mm. forms and to switch their superannuation switch it, switch over. Over, yeah. so if you're one of those people send in your forms so <laughs> you're really going to be pushing this to the max this year 
yeah. Epicenter equilibrium. Epic yeah. Epicenter, yeah, definitely. Yeah. Um, yeah, um, in the in the sort of foundation stages mm -hmm. at the moment. So definitely, yeah. halfway through the year will be really so, going. So forward. where did the name come from? I know what epicenter is, and I know what equilibrium is. Equilibrium is my favourite word. Is it? Yes. And um, I like alliteration, so I wanted another word oh, okay. that started with E. So I'm like, hmm, what can I, what can I have? And it means like my, the centre of balance. My favourite word is efficacious. Is it? Yeah. Okay, yes. <laughs> Good. Aren't people funny? <laughs> but no, that is absolutely great. I'll tell you though, something I've always wanted to ask you while I've got the opportunity mm -hmm. is that why did you give up singing? Maybe a lot of your, your new fans aren't aware, but go to YouTube and uh, you know check out Lee's singing um, and recitations as well. Just spoken word, yeah. Mm. Um, okay, so but when I was you, younger, you all I ever wanted to do since I was younger was just mm. to be a rock star. That was my primary goal. Nothing that else mattered. Dream. That was it. Yeah. And um, then you know I got into more of the vegan stuff and became a bit more, you know, Up not. Market. No, no just more um, not so self-centered maybe and mm -hmm. it's just more about other things than myself which music can be very self-involving mm -hmm. and um, then so I just did you know music here and there I've recorded some CDs and some EPs and done a lot of spoken words and performed and um, I then I started doing my festival in 2009 and pretty much that took over my life yeah. for three years at least. Mm -hmm. So that um, music to me just became way, it just was way down too on the emotional, bottom. Too no, it was just way down on the bottom yeah, of my list of priorities. Yeah. And before, and it sort of flipped because it used to be everything. Mm -hmm. You know, I used to watch, we have a, a music program in Australia called Rage every Friday night, yeah. early Saturday morning. They have all the new releases. I I'd, always used to tape it. I'd watch it all I'd the time. I'd watch it all the time. I'd yeah. buy those CDs mm -hmm. on Monday at work because I used to work in music retail. I'd read all the music street press. I'd get them, you know, NME mm -hmm. from the UK sent to me. I'd get Sydney yeah. street press, drum media. I'd get everything sent to me. I just mm -hmm. loved it. Yeah. And and um, that, you know, that was it. Yeah. And then it's also like any scene, I think, um, is hard to be in. You sort of know the time has come to, yeah. to move on. And I just was sick of the scene. I was sick of a lot of the people within it. And I um, just sort of needed a break. And it's been really good. Like when I went to Asia the first time a couple of years ago, mm -hmm. I sold my guitar and I was planning on getting a travel guitar and actually writing while I was on, mm -hmm. on the road. But I ended up um, meeting the um, Indonesian Vegetarian Society and general manager and they invited me to all these events. Mm -hmm. So half of my time was all these events, which is obviously what I'm meant to be here for, but that mm. wasn't really the plan for writing and working on some books and trying to chill out. Yes. So, but now I, you know, I'm at the stage where I'd like to get back into it and, you know. So I've, you told me a few weeks ago that you might write some more songs. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. And, you know, I just need to be in that sort of mm. headspace, I guess, and I'm just feeling, a, like, right at this moment, feeling a bit overwhelmed with, it, with everything mm -hmm. that's happening, so it just keeps going down to the well, bottom. Well, I think, as I said to you before, I don't know how you do it all. You just, <laughs> um, you have to be so organised and mm. uh, just so um, totally professional yeah. in, what you're, in what you're doing. Yeah. And it does show through because you, you are getting results. Yeah. And uh, I think people love you to bits. We can see that on social media. Mm -hmm. Thousands of love you on G Plus, and mm -hmm. not to mention almost twenty thousand. Yeah, I know. <laughs> it's amazing how quickly it's um, it's gone Jim up. Jim keeps tab of that. <laughs> That's my job. That's my job. But uh, yeah, it, it is amazing, mm. isn't it? It That's really good. is. So, do you think you'll ever come out of retirement and give us a few more? Um, Tunes. Yeah, well, definitely. Like, I'm at the moment. I'm feeling like I'm inspired to do it, mm -hmm. and um, I'm just. I need to write more positive stuff because most of my songs were heartbreak stuff, which mm -hmm. I'm. I don't like. I don't enjoy singing it. I don't want to be reminded of that person I was or those people that I liked mm -hmm. anymore. So it has to be new, and I really like most of my life is about inspiring people and being mm -hmm. positive so I want to bring that across in the music as well mm -hmm. and I have quite a few people that I can write with and yeah. some some people that I meet I'm, I'm thinking I've got a couple of friends that we might do with just a few little cover songs online mm -hmm. for yeah. you, YouTube for a while so check out my Lee Chantel um, channel for that well, but one day anyone, yeah, yeah exactly and that's it I want it to be yeah. fun more than 
you know, when I was just out of school, that was mm-hmm. what I wanted to be my job. It's very hard to yeah. have music as a job and a career nowadays. Mm-hmm. So, um, and yeah, I guess when I think it's just with most things in life, if you don't have any expectations, yeah. you know, you can enjoy it a bit more. So yeah, definitely, Jim, you'll be one of the first to to know about I, that. I'm I, sure. I, I just can't <laughs> wait. May I say too, just talking about inspiration, that you you have been a, a really uh, big inspiration on me. Following, I don't want to get all morbid and gloomy, but my wife died uh, about 18 months ago, and uh, I was in a bit, bit of a, you know, a bit of a blue hole. And this is uh, this lady here inspired me. Uh, she motivated me. She gave me a sort of a, a figurative kick up the uh, backside, if you like, and uh, got me more involved in uh, activism. And uh, she really got me moving. So I do owe you a, a debt of gratitude for that. Thank you, Jim. That's Lovely. okay. Now, now for a hard question. Yeah. How do you think the uh, the vegan movement, the world the vegan movement is going at present? Oh, it depends where you are in the world, mm. I guess. Like in Israel, it's going amazingly well mm-hmm. at the moment. They just seem to be having success after success yeah. and in mainstream mm-hmm. news. Like I yeah. find that so impressive. Um, in Australia, in America, stalling a bit, mm-hmm. maybe treading water. Mm-hmm. I find especially the past five years in particular yeah. I've really noticed people just aren't working together anymore like um, everyone seems to be just into promoting their yeah. own thing everyone seems to have their own sort of vested interests yeah. and, and agendas and that yeah. what, what do you think about the uh, big um, vegan supermarkets coming out of um, Germany and that yeah that's amazing Veg- like, Veganos, I think, isn't it? Veganos? yeah I don't I don't know yeah. the name but it's amazing if yeah, you can find so much choice if you can yeah. find the space the right mm-hmm. place the um, right market and the yeah. people to to go there like my friend jess who runs a cruelty free shop mm-hmm. in sydney and just released uh, just launched and one hasn't in that been a success too. yeah it's amazing just gone so well you know i was there for the opening night i was yeah. there for the first day for the public and i was mm-hmm. flat out yeah. you know and um it's it's amazing when you see but you know keep in mind in melbourne jess has an amazing position mm-hmm. it's like in the you know, sort of location, vegan location, pub location. next to a yeah. vegan store, opposite a vegetarian, mm-hmm. really, um, really sort of popular but restaurant. But obviously, it's a sort of a case of the right location with the right yeah. products at the right yeah. time. Yeah, exactly. Time and yeah. she's an amazing business person mm. too. She's been doing it for 14 years online. So and I think too, you've got to have the sort of have the right staff as well, yeah. you know, credible yeah. sort of people who who understand what yeah. uh, you know, veganism is all about, yeah. really. Yeah. And also, one of my friends who's non-vegan. When we were driving past on the way to her place, we've just been there recently. Mm. She was saying the store looks really new and it looks yeah. inviting because yeah. next to all the other stores, they're a bit dark and they haven't been updated, and mm-hmm. hers is white with green and yeah. it just looks inviting. Oh, that's great. Now, what's what's the future for Leaf and uh, apart from mm. you know you're you're refocusing, uh, you know, with the uh, the podcast and uh, Epicenter Equilibrium and what. What else are you sort of looking to, or what else would you like to achieve in the sort of um, the short to mid term? Well, I guess you know I've decided to stick around home um, for mm. the next home in Brisbane, Australia, for mm-hmm. the next two years, just yeah. to really focus on epicenter stuff. So mm-hmm. that, so my main focus is the speaking and the training stuff yeah. and the corporate sort of events mm-hmm. and. Um, you know that that's good to actually make that decision and I'm not traveling unless someone pays for it so it's yeah. good to have that as a, as a mm-hmm. boundary because I've just been traveling so much lately and that's good and then yeah. um, so that's my sort of professional yeah. side of things and yeah doing more books you know you've got some books um, working on at the moment ebooks always and yeah the podcast and the YouTube so more, that's more, more recipe books yeah, yeah, more recipe books probably. Smoothies will be the next one I'm going to do. Yeah. Um, and um, yeah, just sort of working with my, my tribe that I have um, in person or in online. Yeah. And um, yeah, just seeing, you know, what, yeah. what we can all achieve together. And um, just, yeah, like musically, I'd like to at mm-hmm. least do some covers online and have some fun with that. And um, yeah, I think about travel every day, mm-hmm. but you know, I'm hopefully do that sooner rather than later and I'd like my um, so where would, you, where would you like to go what's your next um, sort of top destination well um, I, my top is Galapagos Island I really want yeah. to go there Charles Darwin country yeah um, 
but I haven't been to the UK or the um, Europe before, so mm. that will probably be the next place to go. So I was born in Scotland. Did oh, you know, were you? Did okay. You know that? Oh, no. And I'd like to, you know, I'd like to. I met some really great German and Italian friends mm -hmm. when I was overseas, so I yeah. want to visit them and see their countries and where they live. Mm -hmm. And um, I, yeah, that I'm looking forward to that. And um, I also want to go to where the Bronte sisters live. Mm -hmm. So they're my sort of main things. And I've got some friends in the UK I want to hang out with yeah. and go to a couple of the events there. But I it's believe, cold. I believe the vegan scene in the UK is very. Um, very dynamic. Yes, in uh, certain pockets. In certain yeah. pockets, yeah. Uh, but certainly that'd be something to might be a new adventure for you. Yeah. yeah, and you know, I've, you know, I've sort of done the the US, Australia, Asian mm -hmm. sort of areas quite well. And did, you, did you did you find the Americans uh, in particular um, a lot more sort of articulate than the Australians? I'm not. I'm not. Oh. They just sort of come across as more sort of um, uh, more animated, and more outspoken. Mm. Uh, not so reticent and coming forward and making well, definitely like you know uh, the Australian accent is very mm. hard for most people to understand if mm -hmm. you if you don't speak English as your first yeah. language it's really horrible actually mm -hmm. and it's harsh even for my ears to yeah. hear a lot of the Australian accent mm -hmm. so yeah if you if people can't understand you that's always going to be an issue yeah. but I find with Americans they just have that um, they're just very confident mm -hmm. and in Australia we call it the tall poppy syndrome so if you even have some level of success people will cut you down as soon as they yeah. can. In America mm -hmm. you know it's just like oh, I'm gonna do this and I'm gonna do that and everyone's like yeah go for it oh I did that yeah. last week you know so it's very um, and I'm, obviously I'm generalizing mm -hmm. but um, yeah it's more sort of conductive especially in places like LA yeah. that uh, you know there's all these new sort of things that come all the time and people are just behind them and you've got so much more so many more people there mm -hmm. therefore more money to support like you know all the startup sort of things or yeah. the grassroots things well sort of you yourself are a bit of a tall puppy have you been sort of um has anyone tried to cut you down to size, so to speak? Oh yes, I'm have sure. Yes. <laughs> how, how do you sort of um, handle that? Um, I guess, you know, I try to have a conversation mm. in person with people if it's an issue. Mm -hmm. um, if what, what if it's on, online and someone sort of, uh, you've raised a particular point or something like that and they won't, they don't want to let go or they won't listen to reason or... I don't really get involved in anything yeah. online. Mm -hmm. I just, for me, it's not a conductive way to use my time. Mm -hmm. So I wouldn't, I would never do that. So I would, if someone raises something to me um, mm -hmm. and they say something, I would just say something like, thanks for the comments. Yeah. Like, and I, because I appreciate people's feedback. Taking the time, yeah. Um, but I'm not going to go, here's where I disagree with you, one to ten points, mm -hmm. because then that just opens up them coming back to you with ten more points and you going back to them. Yeah. And I literally do not have time for that. Mm -hmm. And I don't, I don't, I don't want to let negativity sort of thrive, mm -hmm. like I'm more for the positive aspects. And I, you know, I value every, anyone's yeah. opinion, whether or not I, I agree with it mm -hmm. and whether or not um, it's something I'd want to promote. Mm -hmm. Um, that people are entitled to their opinion. Um, but, uh, but that's, uh, I think that's really good advice for, um, yeah. for new advocates on that, yeah, for sure. But it's hard, you know, yeah. and also a lot of people have some issues, personal issues, mm -hmm. that they're maybe trying to deal with or haven't yeah. dealt with and properly. You don't, you don't know, do you? You, don't, you no. don't know what people are going through yeah. and you don't know where they are in their stage in life. Mm -hmm. and. You know, I find it, it's just really easy for people to be mm -hmm. angry, it's really easy for people to be mean to people, but it takes a lot to rise above that and just, you know, just be nice and, you know, that's what I'm trying to promote to people, just be compassionate to everyone, animals, humans, yeah. everyone, the planet yourself as well, mm -hmm. so... Um, yeah, hatred or anger doesn't win uh, any friends. No, right. definitely. And, but, I, you know, I, anyone who says, says things, like, I, I wish them well. Like I, yeah. I'm, tr you know, I come from love and peace and compassion. So mm -hmm. I, I hope the best for those sort of people because they're the ones, you know, that need our love the most. And what do you think about the state of uh, activism at the moment? I think, I think it's a hard one because so many people have different um, interpretations of what sort of, activism is. Do you think we're heading in the right direction? I think we're stalling a lot. Mm. I think. People are just too 
people are just investing too much time in drama than actually doing mm -hmm. things. And I said to the guys from um, Which Side Podcast actually today that um, I think a lot of people seem to think if they're just aware of an issue or mm -hmm. they just share an issue or comment on an issue that that's enough. So in particular that's what Facebook and those things yeah. have not been good for maybe. Mm -hmm. Like it's been amazing to spread the yeah. word. But then when you know about it, what do you do with it? Yeah. So that's, I think that's the trick. So instead of, and I think it's it's a, a really sort of competitive and a judgmental mm -hmm. way. So for me, the, one of my things this year I'm doing actually is, you know, trying not to be judgmental. Do you think it's a case too in some, in some areas that, that people are sort of um, really emotionally connected to, um, to animal rights, but they don't know what to do? Yeah, definitely, because, yeah, that, and that's sort of where I was going with that train of thought was, um, like, there's a lot of people that say, this is activism, this is not activism, you shouldn't be doing this, you should be doing this, only this, only this. Some people are not good at protests, some people are not good at speaking to people, some people are not good at handing out leaflets. Mm -hmm. You find the thing that you're good at, and you do it, and you do it well. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, that's, I think, I think that's a really simple thing, yeah. but I think people just forget how... Um, important they themselves are, and how important the things that they know can mm -hmm. actually can actually make some change. Yeah. Like you yourself can really make some change. Well, I think we have seen that over the years since 2006. With uh, you know, with you in particular, you have. Um, mm -hmm. I'm sure you've created many uh, many new vegans, <laughs> and so you know many uh, many new uh, activists as well. So. I'm sure you have. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I just like to plant the seeds. That's you know mm -hmm. I'm. I'm that, that's all you can do, isn't it? Yeah. You, I, can, you can't force people. No, you can't. No. And I used to think that when I first became vegan, just because I found the found the facts, and then I went vegan. And I just mm -hmm. assumed everyone else would be like that, and that's just not true. Not so that easy, is it? it's hard when you realise that. But I, I'm not as attached to outcomes mm -hmm. anymore as yeah. I used to be, which is which is really good. Yeah. And it frees me. Mm -hmm. That is so good. Thank you so much for taking the time. Thank you. I, hope, I hope I haven't let you down. No, good job. Good interviewer. Um, do you think there's a future there? or? Oh, maybe, yeah, yeah. I could be online shortly with my own, could, uh, yep. my own, own channel. Own podcast, own YouTube channel. <laughs> I don't think Why so. Not? I'm more the background type. <laughs> but thank you so much for all your time. Thank you, Jim. Oh, thank you for watching. And see vivalavegan.net for more information. And don't forget the cookbook. <laughs> thank you.